discuss hurricane characteristics. Uh, you saw pictures of what a hurricane looks like, the bands of heavy rains and high winds. <clears throat> As you go towards the center, the winds increase, and the strongest winds and rain are always right at the eye wall, right at the edge of the wall of the eye itself. Uh, here's a picture of an actual eye, and it's from inside the eye looking out towards the storm. You can see the curve here, the clear blue sky above. And it's very calm, very few winds in, in the center here. Now, this is up in, in a plane looking down, you know, Earth's down here. And uh, <clears throat> the heaviest winds and rain are right at that wall that you see in front of you. Uh, wind spiral towards the center of the storm, uh, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Uh, they produce a storm surge, a wall of water found to the northeast of the storm center. So... As this storm's coming forward, here's the here's the eye, and here's you know the hurricane coming towards you. Let's say it's going up the page in this direction, with the wind spinning counterclockwise. The wind and low pressure are driving water well, that's on the surface of the ocean. If, if you're near, near the ocean, which they usually come from, because that's where they form, this this wall of water is coming north also, and wherever it hits can be can usually cause the most damage, more damage than the uh, wind itself. So the picture I'm showing you here is, you know, the normal sea level and the normal high tide, a few feet above that. But when the storm surge comes, the high tide is extremely high. The water comes and it devastates property and washes a lot of stuff away. So you think tsunami in a sense because it's driving this water and ocean water in. Now, tsunamis go way further inland than hurricanes do as far as storm surge go. But the effects near the coastline are about the same. Okay, um, the center of the storm is called the eye. There's no, very little wind, no rain. Sun could be out. You know, the sizes vary quite a bit. Sometimes even a, a healthy storm will not have a good eye. Usually the clearer eye, the stronger the storm, but you know that's not always the case as well. They can fluctuate and wobble a little bit. Uh, okay, the average size is 300 miles. Uh, again, it tends to be measured the clouds. Now you saw the eye, then there's the, the banding, and then there's the clouds that shoot off way out here. I mean, it could really almost be a thousand miles as far as from cloud to cloud tip. But the storm itself is relatively compact. One to two weeks and possibly longer. Some storms hang out there a long time if they're traveling pretty slow. <clears throat> uh, again, here's a, kind of a path of a hurricane going, uh, Hurricane Michael, in fact. And you've heard of these cones. These are the probabilities of the, of the storm going. It could go here or there off of this path as it's going forward. And the further you go out, there's more uncertainty, so the, the cone gets wide. Right. Hurricanes can also produce tornadoes. Um, and the, the name of the hurricanes are pre, de, predetermined by a list of names. And they go male and female, back and forth. It's also in 1953. They didn't have names before that. In fact, in 53, they just had women's names. I think sometime in the 70s, they started adding men's names to the list. It begins June 1st, the hurricane season. We've had them before June, and it ends November 30th, and we can have them after November 30th. We've already had a hurricane, I think, during New Year's, a few years back. But that's the primary season for the Atlantic hurricane season is from June 1st to November 30th. Again, it can occur any time of year. This is last year's name. I didn't update this, update this list. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember how far we got, but last year was a pretty quiet year for hurricanes in the Atlantic. Oh, this is this year's list. Here we go, 2020. So, <clears throat> and that, look, you can see they, they do it pretty far in advance. You can look up the names. Um, and for this year, whoa, slow down here. Uh, you can see where they start. It's always alphabetical order from A through, you know, I say Z, but there's no Z on this list. And they've already gone back to the beginning, I think, I don't know how many years ago, but they had to go back to the beginning and they called it Alpha, Beta, Gamma, using Greek letters, because they went through the entire list in one season. Uh, and they have a long list of names that are retired from, because the storms were significant as far as their size or their damage, or just something historical that happened during that storm. Quite a, quite a list of names are retired. There are other names for hurricanes called typhoons and cyclones, depending on which part of the world they're in. So again, you have typhoons out west near Japan, cyclones in the southern hemisphere. And, you know, as you look at this map, there's very few around South America. 
Uh, how do we study hurricanes? Through radar, satellites, aircraft, computers, ships, and maps. Um, a lot of measurements need to be taken so they know what the size of the storm is. They fly planes into the actual storm, measure air pressure and wind speeds. And also through balloons, they release balloons. Yeah, it sounds funny, but they release them all around the planet so they can see the steering winds that would drive hurricanes from one place to another. Uh, storms can be tracked uh, using longitude, latitude, longitude. Um, again, most storms come from off of Africa towards the Caribbean, and some might turn up into the ocean and affect nobody. Some may come into the Caribbean itself, Caribbean the Sea. Some actually form in the Gulf of Mexico, in those directions as well. Hurricane safety. Now, again, here we don't necessarily get a direct hit of a hurricane, but you know they evacuate the coastlines and get to higher ground because the storm surge bore up windows so the wind doesn't blow through the window and ruin the interior of the house. Of course, the power has to go off. And if you're there, have some food stored up because you may not have electricity for a while to, or bottled water. And a radio to help give you information. The damage can be extensive and broad and wide. I mean, move, ships can be moved, buildings destroyed. It's kind of funny. This board got drilled through that tree. It was moving so fast. And lots of flooding. <clears throat> Here's last year's list. Obviously, it's a pretty quiet year for us in the United States. We had, looks like we had really two that came ashore. And they probably didn't do as much damage. It looks like this one over here, I don't know which one, the name of oh, Melissa. Whatever this one was here, I don't know the name. Is that Dorian? Got pretty close, but never actually hit. So it was a very quiet year in the Atlantic. The worst year was 2005. There were 27 named storms. So yeah, you can see you went through the alphabet. And uh, there aren't, there's only like 23 names because they don't use always the Q's and the uh, X's and the Z's. So when you go above 26, or actually 24, you're going into the Greek alphabet. Seven majors is significant. Uh, all the names, and they used the Greek alphabet for the rest of them. There were three that were category fives, Katrina, Rita, and Wilma. And Katrina is one we all heard about as it hit New Orleans. Seven hit, made landfall in the United States. So that's a lot for one year. Katrina is most destructive. Uh, Wilma's central pressure dropped to 88 to millibars, lowest pressure ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. So it was a record-breaking storm. Costs an estimated $110 billion. <clears throat> 1,500 people lost their lives. That's the most since 1928. So that's a pretty busy year for hurricanes.